You're all very welcome. Uh, this is a project um, with the Traveller, the Blanchestown Traveller Development Project. Um, have initiated uh, a series of things for your enjoyment for to celebrate tra uh, Traveller Pride Week. Um, and we have guests, um, Helen Hutchinson, uh, Catherine Joyce and Michael Collins, um, who are all taking part in a discussion um, about topics that are the most urgent at this time uh, for Traveller Pride Week. Uh, Catherine is the manager of Blanchestown Traveller Development Project. Michael is an actor and a writer, and Helen is a poet. Um, and you're all very welcome to the complex. Thanks for having us. Um, my first question is, um, what is the most pressing issue for travellers in 2021? I suppose there's a, a few issues, um, and people would see uh, the p people would say that they, they would see the difference between what issues affect different people. But I think the most pressing one for me at the moment is the whole thing around uh, suicide and mental health and mental health issues. And I think COVID has played a big part in, actually, and not a negative part either, but a kind of a positive part where now people are beginning to talk about. The, the effects of mental health, because it's not just alone are they seeing it affecting um, people who have uh, problems with alcohol or drink or unemployment, but because of the way people are losing their own freedom. And because uh, they can't have their own freedom, we see the mental health issue being brought up more and more and, uh, every day. And I think it's great to hear people talking about it, because when people talk about mental health issues, it means that everybody now can get involved in the conversation. So that would be one of the things for me, I suppose. Helen, what do you think? I would say I go along with Michael. Yes, as people will be more aware that of the freedom that they have lost through the pandemic. And in saying that for decades and decades, travelers have lost their freedom and have been suppressed. So now maybe the eyes will open up and maybe they will treat travelers a little bit kinder than we were treated that the understanding may come a bit deeper that freedom means a lot. Freedom means a lot. And for travellers, freedom means a lot. It means they're suppressed for years and years. They're hounded, they're told move on, move on. They never had a place to settle down. And now that they're in halting sites, housing schemes and in houses in estates, um, they're, 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 they're with the people within the pandemic, but there's a lot of eternal issues that has got to be solved within travellers themselves. And as for suicide, well, before any pandemic ever came, I've lost six of my family through suicide, mm -hmm. through settling down, um, through suppression, and through the system failing us. So yes, the pandemic did a lot of powerful things for us and hope that we'll get a better understanding now. Well, the pandemic is an, over, is an ongoing thing and maybe people will come to realise that their freedom and that what we were talking about was something that they, in a way, t was taken away from them as well. So I'll give them an idea of what it's like to be locked up, of what it's like to be put, suppressed into your own life and having to live a life a month, of months, of months in your own house or with your family in a house but not being in contact with other people say and now hopefully that we're out of it and places things are opened up that will open up avenues for travellers as well. Mm. Would you say that that's the most pressing issue Catherine? I, I would agree that internally in the travel community it certainly is a huge issue and the rates of suicide in the travel community is seven times the national average which is extremely alarming but I think for us as a project the issues and the priorities have certainly changed given the two years that we've been in this pandemic um, and it's not just a, a, a domestic issue for us in, in Ireland it's a global issue so but when we look at that in terms of the impact that that has on families um, it gets very 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 serious and very straight to the, the work of our own project so over the course of the last year and a half we've been looking at probably trying to manage the impact of this virus and how it's impinging on our community's rights. But we also see then that some of the families are actually in more hardship than they were before the pandemic happened. 
So some families that were able to get up and go out and do a bit of work, even if it was in the informal economy, they were able to go out and meet people, they were able to do markets and all of that kind of stuff. Because of the lockdown, all of that was taken away. So now we have situations where families are in dire poverty, poverty relying on hampers, food hampers, um, and we as a project have been working locally, not just in our own project, but with the other local projects as well, about trying to make sure that services are retained, um, particularly when it comes to food and water and electricity and that kind of stuff. Um, we do see some is issues getting um, worse, like the access to education has always been an issue for travellers, um, and access to culturally appropriate education has been an issue. But if you're a travel child and you're living on a site, you don't have access to electricity, you don't have access to your own laptop, you don't have access to your own mobile phone, you probably don't have Wi-Fi. So remote learning is not an, an, an option for a lot of families. Um, and then if we just look then in the whole of the community area that we live in, like there are a lot of families that are under dire pressure financially because their partners or themselves, they're not able to go out and work. And then you have the added cost of having children at home all day, every day, and trying to entertain them and keep them going. So the issues that affect many settled people affect us as a travel community, but sometimes they're worse because of the circumstances that we're forced to live in as members of the travel community. Um, but having said that, there are some positive aspects of it as well. Like our project has been able to remain and sustain the work that we're involved in. Um, and we've been able to link with some of the settled organisations in our area that maybe we wouldn't have even thought about linking with before. Um, so connections and, and I suppose in the team of, of this year's Traveller Pride, Stronger Together, that's a little bit more um, evident. And I think as a result of that, we get a little bit more resilient um, and a little bit stronger in our fight and our campaign and our will to fight. Excellent. Um, that's an it's an interesting thing that you picked suicide as the most the first thing that you thought of, and I wonder if you thought that that was exacerbated as a result of being in the COVID pandemic time. Do you think that it was it was clearly an issue before? Do you think that it? No, it was definitely an issue before. And, and was it, it always a number issue. one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it has been an issue for a long, long time. I um, mean, I ended up writing a play called Magpies on the Pylon, which was about um, a family losing a son. And I was trying to bring it out to travel groups and settled groups. And uh, one of the great things about the play was when you were performing the play, even though it was based in the traveling community, when people were watching the play 10 minutes into the play, it wasn't about any community. It was about a family losing a person through suicide. But the reason why I, I, I was saying that the pandemic in a positive light has brought up the issue more around mental health. So now we're saying that there are people out there that you can talk to, there are people that, that you can go to. You need to talk to somebody. If you know somebody who needs somebody to talk to and you can't talk to them, please try and find somebody who can because there is help out there. And I think one of the things that I've said through the play is that suicide, even though it's higher in the traveling community, it, it's a community issue. It's a society issue, and that's what we need to understand. Yeah, and I think on top of that as well, what we have is we have mainstream service providers and they talk to travellers like they're settled people. And some of the things that they're giving them to deal with mental health problems is not possible. So if you're a traveller and you live on a traveller's site, the people that might be living around you might be causing your anxiety. <laughs> and if, if you're asked to go out and get a walk, you have to walk by these people to get onto a clear road or onto a laneway or somewhere. Um, and then you face those people coming back in. So I think there's a lot to be said for in-service training for a lot of these service providers so that they're aware of the cultural differences and the accommodation differences and the circumstances which can impact on travellers being able to look after their mental health. And that's some of the work that we're trying to do again in Blanchardstown. We're trying to link with mainstream services, not to set up segregated services for travellers, but to link with the mainstream services and to get them to look at how they deliver those services and look at what adaption needs to happen to make them applicable to travellers. And, and I suppose what we're involved in here today, and this is the whole thing, like, I mean, I, I would, um, uh, met, the first time I met, Helen Hutchinson was in 1985, and any time we ever met, we always picked up where we left off. But, you know, um, and, and, and the work Captain is doing. But through the entertainment business, you can talk to people, like through doing theatre, poetry, singing, people come to see a show, people come to see somebody doing poetry who is feeling what they feel. So by being involved in, 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 in the, the, the Traveller Pride Week and using different aspects of 
uh, you could say, the, the, the arts. And that, that gives, opens up another discussion where people can join in because they don't really feel it's about them. They, I mean, they think it's about you, but really it's about them and it's about us. Is that something that you've noticed, Helen, yourself? It is, yes, yes. But uh, there's another side to it that, um, where I would say with the suicides and the pandemic, even though the pandemic, pandemic is here, there were a lot of travellers down in my part of the country very much left out, very much left on their own. I was going to say, is there, there was, was there a big difference between city and country? Where there was groups and volunteers out there helping the old people because there were travellers who were, weren't recognised and weren't given help. Uh, the young travellers, because there was a five mile kilometre, uh, you couldn't go past it, they couldn't reach out to those old people because the police would stop you on the road. And in cases the people would stay outside the halting sites, the guards, sorry, would stay outside the halting sites to prevent the travellers from coming out to do their essential shopping. Like, where are you going to go back in? It's like the travellers, in a way, were part of the disease when they weren't. Um, and then the overcrowded conditions with travellers and the accommodation, um, when one get, got infected, more than likely the whole group would get infected because of families of eight, in a house and then in a halting site you'd have maybe 50 to 100 travellers and they would be integrating and that um, it would spread throughout the community and there, was no, there wasn't that much help down the country for them. They were just told to stay in, isolate. Um, it was hard, it was hard and the conditions that they live in anyway is not a lot to be desired where you have in one halting site you don't, they call them the proper halting sites, no way. This is one, bed, one bedroom, bedroom come kitchen come sitting room. People have to live uh, in one room, this is five bays and there's a little room in each bay. One room, they've got to put down their mattresses on the floors in the night, and let their children sleep on the floors and maybe, maybe if they're lucky enough to have a caravan outside and they have to get up in the morning, put up the mattresses against the wall, that's the way they live. They live, they're very confined, there is no space. I would, I would object to, to that way of living and the council down in Tipperary saying that they feared travellers. They, they're not, they should be ashamed of themselves for what they're doing to travellers. We have another group of travellers up in Clan Mel. I know a boy who has eight children living in a three bedroom house, that means there would be 10 of them. And there's four of them children special needs. Some of them with little pegs up, tubes up their nose, pegs down their tummies, and the council coming out harassing them. You have dogs, you have horses, you have hens. Get rid of them. Bypassing the real issue and denying themselves the real issue and not looking at the proper needs that those people want. They're looking at animals. Now, the Vits came out and said the dogs are in perfect condition and uh, the health board the inspector came out and said there is no way that this family should be able to live or should be allowed to live in those conditions but it's still going on. Mm -hmm. Further down, I have on the, same, on the same area, you have caravans pulled in and all the council can give them is a toilet, no electric, and they'll tell them they are accommodated. Mm -hmm. Now, so living through a pandemic, the water to wash your hands, and you're denied a sup of water, you're denied the proper facilities, and you are overcrowded. And the, the system, the council, the Tipperary County Council, are denied them everything. They are a disgrace. They are a disgrace. I think, Vanessa, it's very important what Helen said there that we don't skip over it, that the impact on the travel community is very different to the settled community, but it's quite similar to situations where people are living in, um, in residential homes or people who are re living in reception centres or people who are living in um, hotels. Uh, hotels or the homeless people. They're in these confined spaces where they're even more restricted than you would be if you were at home. Um, and the impact that it has on those people is, is, is exaggerated by the fact of, of, of government policy in, in one way. Like in Blanchardstown, we have a number of families that are living on sites with no sanitation, quite similar to what Helen has described. Um, sometimes they have no electricity, and yet all the messages coming from left, right and centre is wash your hands, wash your hands, wash yeah. your hands, sanitise, sanitise, stay do separate. this, stay, yeah. uh, separate, isolate yes. when you get sick and all those things. So I think, I think when this is over, there's a lot of learning to be done in terms of evaluating how we responded 
to this pandemic. And I think in, in, in that way, some of the traveller projects around the country where they're lucky to have a travel organisation working closely with them um, have benefited from that because the primary healthcare workers in our area are out on the sites, they're monitoring the cases of incidents, they're handing out PPE onto the sites, they're helping with food parcels, they're helping with um, equipment that might be needed for homework and stuff like that. So local projects, I think, have taken on this additional work with not a whole lot of additional resources, but they are nonetheless to be commended for the volume of work that they've been able to do in responding to the pandemic that is happening um, in the country. And we're starting to see a wind down of that now and things are starting to come back to normal. But what I hope is that we're, they're not going to go back to a return to where they start evicting tra travellers and criminalising travellers and that we start segregating our negative differences and, and say that we're worse off than you or you're worse off than us. Um, because I think that has slowly taken a sideline in the, in the whole pandemic time frame. Um, but there is a real danger that we'll go back to the, the way settled people view travellers and blame travellers for a lot of the stuff that's happening in society when in fact we need to be looking at government policy around all of us as a collective. Do you think you've gained a stronger voice as a result of the Covid? Um, I, I don't know how the other two panellists feel but I think that our voice has been muzzled in a lot of ways because we're not talking about accommodation, we're not talking about education um, as publicly as we would be um, if it's not pandemic related. The RTE doesn't want to hear about you, the news doesn't want to hear about you. If you're not dealing with a crisis on the site that's to do with the pandemic, they really don't want to know. So your, your, your voice has been muzzled a little bit to the, to the extent that um, pan pandemic stories take over other stories that are still there and prevalent that have, have not gone away in the travel community. Um, like the suicide rates, like the education, like the, the mental health, like the accommodation situation. Those things haven't gone away, but they've been um, overridden by the, the whole priorities that are given around the pandemic and how we're responding to the pandemic. So health came up as a priority earlier in terms of mental health, and that's being discussed further. But in a sense, what you're saying is that the other issues which may have been there before, which are as urgent, have less attention because they're not part of the COVID response. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, it's not all negative. I mean, there are some positive things happening in society yeah, that, have, what, what that will have an impact on the traffic community, like the National Curriculum Assessment people and the Oireachtas Subcommittee have started to look at in certain traver new and contemporary uh, information about travellers into the curriculum so that the whole school will learn about traveller culture and identity. Um, and we see that as a very positive and welcome step. Um, we're also looking at um, the ways in which travellers can be more integrated into settled society and into communities while respecting the traveller culture and identity. Now it's a slow process and, and it'll take a long time for that to happen, but we are seeing more and more traveller voices in, Michael said, theatre, films, stories, um, poems, in artists coming out um, from the traveller community. And it's good to see a young generation having that confidence within themselves to actually do that and to be creative about the work. Um, so we're not just responding to what the settled people want to hear, but we're telling the stories that we want to tell and how we want to tell them. Um, and I think those things have allowed, or at least the time frame in the pandemic has allowed people to be more reflective on that. Sure, because both of your pieces were very, very strong about your own experiences with education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was a very powerful thing. And uh, obviously it's something that, you know, you feel very strongly about and it certainly touched me hugely, you know. Um, I'm wondering, um, I'm... I, I, I'm picking up on the, the phrase stronger together that you, 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 you mentioned there, Catherine, wondering what that means to you now, Michael, perhaps in 2021. Yeah, well, I, I suppose um, uh, being stronger together is that to me, people will be stronger together when they come together and they write something or they, 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 they have the opportunity to develop. Um, um, a project which is working with other ethnic minority groups and the travel group and that that, that the arts council and that the, the film board and people that, that they see the value of the, the writing that is being produced by travel um, poets um, script writers that this needs to be you know valued and represented and funded so we can get the message out there but also work with other people which makes both of us as different communities and other communities stronger together. Like us coming to work in your building makes us stronger together, even though we know each other and we're doing a bit of work together. So that should be seen as something that 
could be, you know, in, 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 in the future that could be funded and developed and, you know, even if it's just down to um, getting a group of people together to sing a few songs, it's nice for it to happen. A bit of poetry, a bit of acting, a bit of singing. So there are opportunities out there for people in positions that have the, the ability to fund projects and n not fund them because they might have, or oh, we already funded one traveller group, yeah, but there are other groups around who are different, have different it. stories, yeah. have different ways of telling stuff. So it needs to be valued. And that's not just the traveling community, that's the, the, the working class community, that's the refugees and silent seekers community, the Nigerian community, the China. It doesn't matter once it's all, you know, looked into and, and, and valued and appreciated and funded. How about it's yourself, Helen? Yes, what's stronger poetry together? Poetry and true, yeah. like Michael was saying, drama. Yeah. Catherine being an activist, and I'm being an activist. You're actually reaching out to young people. You're getting their attention, and it's not like the old days, 20 years ago, when young people didn't have the education. Now they do, to a limit, they do have a certain education, but it's to get their attention, and it's to give them confidence that we're up here and we're doing what we do for them. But we are pleading to, to them for to come up to help us and to unite and get together because it's lovely for the system to know that there's a vision within the travellers and a vision within organisations when there shouldn't be because at the end of the day they're all fighting for the one cause, travellers' rights. They're all fighting for accommodation, they're all fighting for health to be perfect, they're all fighting for the teaching, for education. So it's great that see that there's so many groups coming together and they're coming out of the woodworks and even though there's a pandemic going on that we're still here and that we're still fighting and it shows that we are we, we want the people to come out we want the young people we desire them to come and share with us and to learn from us and to be proud of who they are don't go into their shell and lock themselves away from society lock themselves away even from their own people but rather come out like michael says talk to us join us they become something, they are something, they are human beings and they're good people, all travellers and across the board, all, all people that we should join. And we're reaching out as well to the settled people, to break down the barriers. So many barriers have been put up by the system, by the system to keep us apart. And it's time for all those barriers to be one by one, shredded down. And for us, yes, we want to keep our identity and we are proud of who we are, but to be accepted for who we are and we respect them for who they are. We are different, but the same as human beings. Excellent. Are you seeing a renewed confidence in young people? What do you think, Catherine? Yeah, ju just to go back on the first question in terms of what does it mean for me and the, the whole Stronger Together, I think it's a little bit different from my point of view because Michael and um, Helen are both in the creative arts yes. uh, arena as well as being activists in their own right. Um, but for me, my day job is working on the ground as a community development um, project, um, one of the managers that work out there in Blanchettstown. Um, and for me, Stronger Together means that there is loads of people in our area fighting on the homeless issue and we should be joined with them fighting on that issue. Um, we shouldn't have to deal with homeless families having to commute from swords back to Blanchardstown, but that's the reality that we live in. But we should be saying that jointly and making those statements and those de demands jointly as collective uh, voices. Um, and I think that if we look at any area in our own communities, um, I think we should be looking at ways in which we can join similar causes, collaborate with people that we maybe didn't collaborate be with before, and to look at how we engage with um, people who are not connected to our projects even in our local area, maybe travellers that haven't connected with us before. So how do we get their voice heard, even if they don't want to be on our CE scheme or our primary healthcare yeah. programme or linked into our Traveller Pride event? How do we engage with those people on the ground that have really serious issues that are having a really detrimental effect on their mental health, their well-being and their family's well-being? So I think for me, the Stronger Together is about how do we unify ourselves and how do we reflect on our needs collectively, both as a family, both as an individual, both as communities, and then also in terms of our connections with civil society and the societies that we live in. Um, and I think, going back to what Helen said about identity, I think it's very important that people shouldn't be asked to suppress or compromise 
their identity and their values and their belief systems to be accepted. So I think we all have to start looking at how we view others um, and how we make sure that we are um, inclusion um, and including those people in our conversations. Because if we don't, the reality is we exclude them by default. We're excluding others. Um, so I think Stronger Together for me is about that unifying of groups, communities, families and connections with other organisations that we work with and that we come across uh, in our area. Um, and I've forgotten the second question you asked. It me. was about, do you see a new confidence? Do you see confidence in the young people? I think that there is a lot of travellers out there, certainly people who are coming to our project. Education and opportunities to progress in education has given them a certain level of confidence. Um, and it, it goes to a certain level. But when you're putting the, those people out there for jobs in the mainstream labour market force or putting them on into further education, then you can see the confidence levels drop. They don't want to be called a knacker when they're getting employed. They don't want to be people to be referring to knackers in their conversations when they're uh, in the rear's reach of, of, of members of the traffic community. So the confidence is, is, is high to, within the traffic community, um, and I would say more so within young people. But when that goes outside of our community and they start to engage with mainstream society, that confidence level does drop. And we see that very, very strongly in our project's catchment area. Do you think that COVID has had any effect on that? Um, I don't think it has had an effect, but I certainly think that people having connections with their peers has had an effect to them. So um, we have children who are still going to school and grandchildren that are going to school. And if they're going to school and they meet another member of the traffic community that they go on the bus with or that they meet in school, that connection was gone for the length of time that they were in the pandemic. So now they're just dealing with the siblings and the family, extended family and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and isolation can co create a lot of difficulties for young people and um, when they're idle and even just trying to connect with members of their school friends. I, I had a conversation with Mary Otto who put her child into school um, uh, recently and he's gone from one school to another school and it, it, she, it basically the conversation that we're having is that it was easier to transfer him into a school in the pandemic time because he's lost those connections with, the, with, with his old school friends and the new starting over wasn't as dramatic for him as it might have been had she took him out in the middle of a school year when he was in that connection with all of those friends. So there, there's pros and cons of it. And I think as, as projects, what we're trying to do is look at the, the positive learning from what we've done. Um, but I think that we have to be very mindful of, my project is a community development project, and we've spent a lot of time on the front line responding to crisis after crisis during the pandemic. And we have to get back into the community development frame of mind and look at how we can prove some of the stuff that's going on in society for travellers, rather than to responding to the individual needs of families. Um, and why that needs to be done, it doesn't need to be done by Blanchestown Traveller Development Group. There are other agencies out there that should be taking those responsibilities. So I think Stronger Together and the team of this year's Traveller Pride is about looking at what our responsibility is in that book, giving it back to the people who need to take responsibility as well. And do you think your voice is being heard? Um, I think to somewhat extent we've been heard in different fields and different avenues and we do have travellers active at a very local level, um, at, a, at, a, at a regional level in our organisations um, and then we do have travellers representing the traveller voice at national level. But I think it's not for the want of talking that we're not getting heard, it's for the want of listen and I think that that's what needs to change. People, need, uh, people who are in a position to change policy need to listen to what the travel community is saying in terms of how you can respond proactively to the needs of the travel community. Very good. Well, we, for, on behalf of the complex, would like to offer our services to you. And so if there's anything we can do creatively, we will lend our support to you. And, um, and thank you so very much for coming in and for beautiful performances and for such an interesting talk. And um, roll on Traveller Pride Week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.